What's up my friends, welcome back to another Electro News video. And this is the place where I show you the projects that I'm working on right now, some future projects and the problems that I have with those projects, also the new kits that I received, the modules, the actuators that I have around here, some new, some new tools for my workshop and so on. So maybe with that you'll learn something new. Today we'll take a look at the projects that I'm working on right now, which will involve a flyback transformer. Then we'll take a look at uh, the WISP block, which is a kit for IoT, everything that we have inside and how to use it. Then I want to show three PCBs projects that I'm working on right now and the problems that I have with those PCBs and how to fix those. And also the tools that I just received for my workshop. And also something new about my website, so stick around. So guys, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. So let's start with the next project we'll have on this channel for the next week. And that project involves this. And this is a flyback transformer. Actually, I don't really want to tell you much about this project. I will put some videos on the screen right now, but I don't want to make a spoiler for you because you'll have this video the next week. But wait for it because it involves a lot of plasma arcs, music. I will show you two circuits, uh, two schematics, one PCB, mount them up, show you the differences between the circuits and test them out with music and plasma arcs. And it will be awesome and full of sparks. So yeah, stay tuned for that. In that video, I will show you two circuits the PCB as well, the problems and the results and how to get music plasma. And using animations as always, I'll try to explain you how these circuits create high frequency and high voltage. Ok guys, so next I want to show three future PCBs projects with these three PCBs and the problems that I had with two of these because this one is working, it has some problems but it's working, but these other two are having some mechanical problems, I'll explain you that. I want to show the connections, the what is the project about and so on. So let's start with this one. This is the PCB for balancing, uh, balancing robot or balanced robot. I'm not sure how to call this. And I had some problems with this with some small step motors. Anyway, let me show you more details. This PCB has an IMU module and it can read the angle. But it also has a space for a Bluetooth module so we can control the movement. Then we have two step motor drivers to control the motors. But the problem is that I wanted to use these small stepper motors from old CD writers. But this, when they are inside of the writer, they have a support on both sides. But if you remove that support on one side, the shaft will move around, and like that it will break the coils inside. So I can't really use this yet. I then ordered these other micro stepper motors, but I think this time these are too small. This one have some sort of support inside, but they are a little bit too small for what I want, so I'm not sure if I will change the entire PCB or not. Maybe use DC motors instead with an encoder, and I also don't know when this project will be done. But stay tuned for more. The next PCB I want to show you is this one, and this is for a very very small RC toy car. And uh, yes, it will have the, some brush DC motors, some step-on motors, anyway, as you can see I bought a Tesla car, and I can't afford the big one, so I had to buy the toy car. So as you can see, I've took everything out. This is just the chassis, ju just the frame, the metal frame of the car. So this PCB will go below here and it will fit uh, perfectly. And then we'll have the wheels, the controls and so on, a radio connection. And the problems with this is mechanical because the steering is very fragile and it has to be very small. Anyway, let me show you more details and the zoom in on the PCB and explain everything. So I want to use this Tesla toy car shape to make the radio control car with an Arduino and the NRF24 radio module. The PCB has drivers for a step motor for steering and a normal DC motor for controlling the speed. The DC motor will be very small and as you can see the entire PCB is just a few centimeters long. I've got the DC motor to work and using some plastic gears I could transfer the power to the wheels. Also I've just received these metal tubes as well to help me with that because till now I was using some carbon fiber tubes and this will shatter very fast. The problem with this project is the steering mechanism. Because it has to be very small, it is very difficult to make. But I'll try to 3D print it with a precise resin 3D printer, and in that way, it will be very small but also with enough details. I hope I will get to finish this project. And the final PCB I want to show you is this one, and this will be once again for a portable soldering iron, but this will be battery based, so it will have a battery inside. And I don't really want to show too much about this, I don't want to give you a spoiler for the final video because you will have this in like 2 or 3 weeks because this project, the important part is that this project is working. 
The only problem I had it was with the OLED display, but anyway, I don't want to give you a spoiler, so stay tuned for this project. Uh, this will be quite interesting. So the main problem I had with this PCB is that the OLED screen pads are backwards. As you can see, the screen is going that way and it should go that way. So if I flip it, the connections will be backwards because I made, I made a bad design. So all I have to do is to flip the wires and maybe I will do that with some thin wires. These are 12 connections. I have to solder each one separately and then flip the screen. That's the only problem that I found is till now. Then the, the rest, the power controller works and so on. So please stay tuned for this project because it will be quite, quite awesome. Okay guys, I also want to show you a new IoT kit. This is from Rack. This is called the Wisp Plug. This is here. Anyway, this is all modular. So you have the main board and then you can add sensor, uh, actuators, con uh, connections with radio, with uh, LoRa, with uh, Bluetooth and so on. So let me show you what we have inside. This is actually quite interesting for IoT solutions. It's ready to use and the pack is very well designed. As you can see here, it's all very elegant and so on. So let me show you. So this is the kit for the Wiz block developed by Rack, which I bet that some of you guys already know, especially if you work with helium crypto mining. Anyway, this kit will offer you a modular solution. We have the main baseboard, the core, and then we have all sorts of sensors, actuators, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and general radio modules and so on and everything is ready to be developed in any IoT solution. This kit is great for IoT and by the way you can program this with Arduino. So we have the main board with a core on top and that already has the LoRa radio and the BLE connection integrated and outputs for the antennas. And by the way you also receive all sorts of antennas to test with. Then here we have some sensors for temperature, pressure, a 3-axis IMU, for light and environment, and all you have to do is to stamp these modules on the main port and start using this for prototyping IoT projects. Ok, then we have some extra modules. This one extends WISBLOCK's interface with more analog and digital inputs, and also a USB connection. Now this here is a wireless module, that extends the WISBLOCK system with LTE and B IoT connectivity based on the BG77 and also includes the GNS location for both GPS and GLONASS satellites. And you also get this GPS module. Now this other wireless module extends the WISBLOCK system with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity with the ESP32 and using a UART communication with 80 commands. And then we have this current to voltage converter this is another analog input module, and this is an RS485 serial converter. And we have a bunch of other modules that you could find on their website, as you can see here. And these are all modular, and all you have to do is to snap them on the main board and start your code. Everything is well documented on their website. And if you go to their GitHub repository, you can find all sorts of IoT projects that you could copy and try for yourself, and by that increase your IoT skills and create new services or products. Look at this list of projects for testing the sensors and all the connectivity options. So guys, if you are interested, give this kit a try. I will do something with this for sure, so stay tuned for that. Okay guys, so finally I want to show you some new tools that I received here for my workshop and those they, they've made my life easier because I really need those every day. And then I want to show you something new about my website, so let's see that. So this should go very fast, I only have to show you three things. First thing first, this is a cordless screwdriver and this is actually a little bit, a little bit more expensive but it worth the money. This is from Bosch and it has a system that you can change. I will show you that in a moment anyway. And I also got a kit for screws because I always buy separate screws like 10, 20 screws. So in this way I have a lot more. So each time that I make a new project I will be sure that I will have the screws. And finally I have a lot of drill bit projects where I have to make some holes. I break the, the bits. So I bought an entire kit in order to make sure that I will have all the sizes. So let me show each one separately. Okay, so first thing first, this is the PSR Select screwdriver. It's nothing special. The only thing that I like is that uh, all you have to do to change the, the bit here, the, the tip, is to press it inside and then you have this like a revolver, revolver and you can have a lens here, you can see what we have inside. Let me just make a zoom here. Not sure if this will focus. As you can see when I rotate, you can see the bit that you want to use. Let's say that this one, push it out and you can use it. And that's it. And I say that this is a lifesaver. Oh, 
James Bond. This is like James Bond. Anyway, I say that this is a lifesaver because I use it every, every day. Each time that I make a teardown, we have different types of screws. So all you have to do is just point out the screw that you want to use. Then you can change it if you have a flat screw, a star screw and so on. And uh, for the teardowns, for the project that I make, every time that I mount something on my wall, I use this one. So pretty much each day I give a use to this and it's very high quality. Bosch every time will make something good. It's a bit more expensive, but it was the money. And then, well, there is nothing special with this. It's just a screw kit from M1 to M5 with the nuts and some washers as well. And uh, then we have this thing here, which has, I think, 260 drill bits and all sorts of uh, other shapes. We have for, for wood, we have for metal, we have for bricks and walls. And we have this one here, the big one. And yes, this will be also a lifesaver because I make a lot of holes for my project, especially to 3D parts and wood. And uh, yes, that's why I bought it, because I always break them and I need a lot of them. So then I wanted to show you something new about my website, electrons.io. Remember, this is a website that you can make an account and post your own tutorials and projects and everything that you want to share with uh, the others. And uh, the main thing that I've changed is the main wall. As you can see now it has more a look like Instagram, but you can't really see here because this is the desk, desk, desktop version. But if you go into mobile version, as you can see here, let me make a zoom. As you can see, you can scroll down and you will see the project. You can like it, see the comments. You can show more from that project. And this is more interactive, so you can see all the projects from others. And uh, if you want to see the, the, the entire project, you just click it, go inside. And then here, let me just, okay. Here you can have the entire project. And as you can see, I've also changed the design here. It's a lot more better looking. We have the tags, we have the picture here. And I'm also making an app for this. So you will have an Android app soon. And uh, the next part I want to show you, let me just zoom out, is how we edit the, the tutorials. Instead of just having a, just a form, which is very ugly and you don't understand it, you can uh, edit the tutorial in real time. For example, you want to edit this part here, you just click edit description, you change something here, you save it, and then it will scroll down back to that description where you were uh, the last time that you were editing. I'm not sure what, why this is not scrolling down. The page is still loading. Oh, because the description is right here. But let's just change something, for example, here. Let's say that you want to change here you edit this description, you save the paragraph, and then it will scroll down to that paragraph. And also at the bottom, if you want to add any new paragraph, you have this one, which is a lot more visual. You can add a title, you can add a paragraph, a download file, a code, gallery, photos. Uh, you can add a video from YouTube. You can add a quote if you want. And this AdSense block is just for me because I'm an admin. And this will be a lot more visual. I'll make a full video about this one and explain how to use the new edit part for the tutorials which is a lot cooler and by the way now you can change the position of the the chapters for example if you want this video before this text you just click this arrow here and it will put it put it before the text it will scroll down so as you can see now the video is before the text and if you want to put the text back again you click this arrow here once again and now we'll have the text before the video I'm not sure why this is loading so uh, slow. I think because with this uh, laptop, I'm with Wi-Fi. And here in my workshop, we don't have that uh, good Wi-Fi. Anyway, that's it for the update. Okay, guys, so that was the update for this month for this Electro News episode. I hope that you like it and that you have learned something new because that's the most important part for me. And the products that you see here, I will put the links below, also for the tutorials, also for my website and so on. And if you want to support me, as always, you have my Patreon page below and my shop if you want to buy my boards, my designs and my uh, t-shirts. And uh, that's it. That's it for now. Uh, I'll see you, I will see you in the next video. Keep up, you guys.